Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> Welcome all tonight on Tales of Tyria. We have a discussion on the end year development update from ArenaNet and another discussion on the ideal MMO. Stay tuned, it's coming up. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here in the Sound Strategy Network. www.talesoftyria.com is the website. Welcome to another fantastic show. Glad to have you with us, however you got the program. Would you tell a couple people about it, about us uh, for, uh, for us? That would be fantastic. Uh, we're trying to spread the word by word of mouth, so if you enjoy the show, hit the like button, hit the share button, tell somebody, your mom, she might enjoy it, you never know. Bunch of handsome guys here, we got uh, all male cast. Let's do this. I am Bridger with uh, the Sound Strategy Network, and I'll be your host for this evening. Joining me, as always, we've got Freelancer. Welcome to the show, sir. How's it going, Bridger? Not bad. There we go, fixing that. So, uh, did you have a good uh, holiday? Yes, I did, actually. A very good holiday. Um, got to spend some time with some friends. Wasn't exactly expecting that, but... Uh, I guess it beats playing games all night, right? <laughs> yeah. I don't follow. <laughs> I'm sorry, ask, I, don't, right? I don't follow. <laughs> because when I hang out with friends, it is to play games all night. We, it's usually a board game variety instead. Also joining us, we've got Greet. Welcome back, Mr. Roboto. Hey, maybe I'm a robot today. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, great looking haircut, by the way. Are you joining the military anytime soon? Uh, no, I meant it in before we started, but I have to get my haircut before it gets too long, or else it's untamable. Untamable. <laughs> Literally untamable. It's not overusing it, the, the word in that untamable all. Untamable hair. Right, and also joining us, Vega, Mr. J. Vega himself. What? Hello, hello. Now, uh, did you have a good Did you get any good games and Steam sales this, uh, this past um... couple weeks? I I didn't. I've I've resisted. I've done the little um you know, little achievements they have to get the coal. Um <laughs> you got tons of coal? I don't I don't have that much coal, but I actually got enough to, to transmute it into a crappy game I didn't want, so <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> I don't know if that's gotta... a step up or a step down, because now I won't be able to win a Valve complete pack that I already own. I do, however, have three coupons for um Valve games. Like 33% off, 25% off, and 50% off. But All for Valve? For any Valve game. So if I wanted to, I could buy three of them at a massive discount. I, I own all of them you? already. Yeah. So I actually <laughs> have two copies. My, there it is. I'm holding there on to my coal. For the two chance, copies of Portal that I can't give away. <laughs> and two copies of uh, Half-Life 2 that I can't give away. I don't even know how they got there. So Why go can't figure. you give them away? That's because the portal voice of Gigawatt, because everybody I know has them. That's why I can't give them away. Nobody oh. wants it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting a face to the name, even if it is a bit of a fuzzy face. Uh, you're still uh, working on getting your other uh, webcam installed? It should. It was working just great a second ago. Oh, it might just be your... your right well, we might see it pop back in here in a second. Anyway, welcome everybody to the show. Uh, this is going to be a good one. We've got some very interesting things to talk about. Uh, if you are watching live or if you're watching uh, at the, uh, you know, on the YouTube or listening, you can pop up talesofteria.com, check out the post for this show, number 12, and there should be a link to the show notes. We're going to talk about the Guild Wars 2 end year development update. So I assume you guys all read this. The first thing on there is a big post about achievements. And this uh, basically talks about the three different types of achievements, the regular old-fashioned achievement achievements, the ones, the standards that you expect, the daily achievements, and the monthly achievements. All right, quick lightning round. Let's say Gigawatt. 
you're back on here. That looks like a lot better quality. Tell me, what was your first <laughs> reaction to this achievements thing? Achievements. I'm not sure how I feel about achievements, honestly. I, I think there's the, the people they put in for, the people who just like really just like exist to do achievements, I think that's kind of dumb. But uh, <laughs> I kind of I, I admit like getting achievements when I do something cool. I'm like, oh, I got an achievement. That's kind of neat. So I don't know. All right, freelancer. <laughs> Thoughts, achievements, go. Uh, achievements in general, you're asking a stat whore, so, <laughs> so <laughs> of course achievements. I mean, I will be that guy six months in the game. Everybody's like, I'm getting bored. I'm, I'll be like, I'm so close to this achievement. You know? <laughs> I'll, so you, I'll be grinding it out. Drive you'll, my wife. You'll be nuts. the first one to get the achie the title achievement whore for completing every achievement <laughs> in the game. I assume. <laughs> I'll sure try. How about that? Okay. I'll be an excellent feat. Ah, uh, let me see. Where am I missing my my important music? All right, well, uh, then that, I think, just leaves. And i got to remember my numbers here. Great. Give me your thoughts, Stevens. I like the idea that they're making, like, the rest of the SP system sort of achievements, like, the smaller achievements. I don't, I, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of, like, achievement systems as a whole. Like, when they put it in WoW, I was like, meh. I mean, it just wasn't anything. But then there's people I know that just, like... He's like, hey, you want to go do Molten Core? I'm like, why would I want to do that? It's like 20 levels lower than me. But you can get achievements. I don't care about achievements. They don't make me feel better. All right. Oh, no. So not, this is not going where I'm expecting. Vega, you are my only hope. <laughs> uh, thoughts, uh -oh. achievements, go. Um, I like them. Uh, I, I, I guess, I don't know, I haven't been blown away with what they sort of said with the achievements. In terms of without, I like the, what they're doing with the rest of the XP and the whole, um, you know, you get that chest for actually doing something. Um, but in terms of, you know, their actual achievements, you know, it, it's I, I feel like games these days, you can't really be, do anything groundbreaking with achievements. Um, I mean, what, they have, what, what they've done with the rest XP is probably the closest you could get to having something really original and new. But I like, I like getting the titles and I like getting... Um, you know, like if you get a mount or something for doing these achievements or whatnot, um, do I lose sleep over gaining achievements? No. <laughs> you right. know what I think is important to mention here is uh, achievements are friend only now. You know, you can only show it off to your friends according to the notes. So now, hang on. It's... What I that that specifically is the achievement score. Exactly. I mean, it's like gear score, right? You know, where you apparently if you have the best gear, you are so totally more awesome than the guy next to you. So achievement score would work similar if I'm understanding this right. Right. But I'm going to have to, because um, <clears throat> I was expecting a very different conversation here, so I'm going to have to do it all myself. <laughs> Intervention. I'm a little bit angry. And when I get angry, oh, okay. when I get upset, I rant. And when I rant, it's called a bridger rant. All right, ladies and gentlemen, achievements. Achievement, the definition of the word, has changed. There's a, there's a problem out there in Gamerland. People look and they get this thing and it says, Achievement Unlocked. And everybody's like, yes, that adrenaline high, the dopamine in my head tells me that's a good thing. When really, it was Achievement Unlocked, inserted the game disc. Really? Really, developers, you're going to make somebody try and make somebody feel good about inserting a game disc, about walking 10 feet, about beating the first level? Are you kidding me? Achievement is something you have to be proud of, ladies and gentlemen. Proud of. You cannot be proud of doing something that anyone else who ever played the game can do. Beating a hard boss. Okay, that's an achievement. Beating all the hard dungeons in the game. That's an achievement. Uh, you know, collecting all of this stuff from across the world are, that are located on difficult bosses. That's an achievement. But just time spent playing is not an achievement. That's a milestone. Call it what it is. It's not an achievement. It's a milestone. And it bugs the hell out of me when games put in achievements that are not something that you can be proud of. They're not something that you can say, hey, Bob, congratulations on achieving that. It's not an achievement. I just, what is this? Achievement unlocked. Ate a grilled cheese sandwich today. No, it's not an achievement. That's a milestone because it's the third grilled cheese sandwich I've had this week. And it's not something to be proud of, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I just can't. I hate it. I, this is bugging the hell out of me. It's been doing it for forever. I want to be proud when I see that achievement unlocked button. I want to be surprised. Valve does them fantastic. The one where, like, put away, the, the one that always sticks with me is the Left 4 Dead one. 
rode hard, put away wet, which was like a jockey riding a jockey into a spitter's spit, like doing that the first time. You get this cool little thing, and it's got a joke in the word. And <sighs> Anyway, nobody else <laughs> seems to care about that as much as I do. You should, you should read, the, read the chat real quick. Um, they want you. <laughs> They're hoping it would end. <laughs> end they hoping that, it, that it would achievement unlocked because the uh, my rant went too long. What? I don't get it. What's going no. on? No, your shirt. Your oh. shirt. Because what happened with the shirt? What's wrong with my shirt? No, they like your shirt. Oh, they like Look my shirt. Okay. They wanted you to end the rant with that saying. Oh, well, I wasn't picking up on that. You gotta telepathically send that to me again. The rage was just like see things, so. <laughs> it was from da! Uh, Alright, so, yeah, I mean, that's just. It bugs the hell out of me. Now, and, it, and there's one. I mean, in this article, they do sort of say it's divided into tiers. Each tier you complete awards you with achievement points, blah, blah, blah. I just hope that the standard achievement points that give you achievement score are actual things that are challenging in some way. But if it's like, completed 17 dynamic events in the region. No, dynamic events are gonna be, they're gonna be easy. Ah, that just, elite dynamic events, okay, that's something that maybe you can be proud of. That's, that could be an achievement. But, you know, just killed X monsters. That's not an achievement, which is why it bugs me that they took the, the, the feat system, the daily feats, and rolled it into achievements. Because what they've been doing, <laughs> daily feats by themselves are supposed to be things that you get automatically just from playing the game in the first hour or hour and a half and that further blurs the line on the word oh well, I don't I know. Think, am i wrong guys who thinks I, i'm wrong i i, I kind of think for the sake of not having a milestone list and an achievement list think of the real hard achievements as the ones you actually get like a title for or something like dungeon master where, you know, it's a, an actual sort of challenge to do it and not... You, know, you don't get a title for every single achievement you do. You only get titles for the sort of harder ones. And I hope that is true. That seems to be what you're saying. So I, 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 have, yeah. I, have, I have plenty of uh, glass half full looking forward um, <laughs> hope and goodwill. I'm just ranting. All right. So what do you think about these... Uh, so the daily the daily achievement system, and this is something that I pointed out in a couple of different threads, because people don't s seem to equate the daily achievement system with the daily quest system in World of Warcraft, and I don't think that's a f really good comparison. They specifically said that the daily achievement system is designed... Uh, specifically, quote, this system makes the first couple of hours of play each day extremely productive and helps equalize experience and gold gain between casual and hardcore players, which is exactly what the rest XP system did in World of Warcraft. And uh, to me, that seems like, okay, that's a fine little way of doing it. I don't, I don't mind that. Uh, do you guys have any problems with the way they're implementing that? Excellent. Uh, I, well, <laughs> I, I didn't think, think it would be that controversial. I think it's different. I think it's different than what WoW's doing because with WoW, the whole daily quests were they they, they seem to be a lot more specific than what they're talking about doing with these uh, daily achievements because they sort of said that the daily achievements are going to be go kill X amount of monsters. You know, it's not even saying you got to kill centaurs; it's just kill monsters. So it they seem it seems to be a lot more general. So in that sense, I think it's different than WoW. Um, because wow, it was you had to go to a certain place and pick up the quests from whoever, and it seems like with um, these sort of daily achievements, it's just something you you get when you start the game. You don't have to go anywhere to get the quest. You could just immediately start doing them. Yep, yep. I think this and is that, one that's of those. That's what I like about it. Yeah, that. But I think this is one of those things that kind of can mess up the end game because all right it gives you wow rest xp right but what happens when i'm level 80 you know suddenly getting online every day to you know knock out my achievements so therefore i could level up faster theoretically doesn't seem so appealing now that i'm already max level and what now i just get a a, a little bit of gold from it um I, I obviously there's probably gonna be other things you can get from achievements but I, attaching it to that just seems counterintuitive because what about the people that play casually? I mean, they don't have a lot of time to get online and have to punch out these achievements, which, let's be honest, are probably going to be the same relative quests each and every day. 
um, they'll switch them out, I'm sure. But so you, you got a casual player that, in order to feel like they have to catch up to everybody else, hence the rest of XP, they have to grind out these things every day, and that may be all the time they have. I don't know. It, it's we'll see. Yeah, it depends well, entirely on how it's implemented. The problem with like rest XP was that it was the le- it's like when you weren't on, you were gaining it. So with this, it's like as you play, you're getting it rather than not playing. Which is, I think, one thing that ArenaNet really is trying to do. They, they want you to play the game rather than not play it. I remember there were times where I was like, this was way back in the original WoW, where I was like, oh, I don't have to play today because my like, rest is going up. So I don't have to like, worry about it. But now I'll <laughs> well, be like, oh, Well, the other thing that did up. was it, it, it encouraged altaholicism. Altaholicism? Where, where because one character would have a ton of rest XP because you haven't used them in a while, and your main that you've been playing on for a while, well, you already played him all, you know, for three hours today, and he doesn't have any rest XP. Go play your alt instead and level him up. It's more efficient if you want to get all of them to level 80 to kind of do that rather than just go straight up on one character at a time. It's more efficient for, like, slash played time rather than your actual time. Yeah. That's what, that's what it was. So, like, if you didn't have a lot of time and you couldn't play a lot, it's, like... You could just not play and get experience for not playing. To to kind of tack on to what freelancer said, um, with the whole, you know, it, for the casual people who don't want to go on and then have to grind out these dailies just to get that sort of rest experience. It's it. I mean, if they do it right, like they said, if it if all you have to do to get that daily achievement is kill monsters, then you could go about your normal quest chain and play your normal storyline and still get some of those achievements as opposed to having to do like a daily quest where you have to do a specific thing to get that. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly benefit. what it sounds like it's going to be. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think you're probably going to see but things I, I, like kill 10 monsters or, or 15 or whatever, say 20, 20 mobs, or complete two dynamic events, or it's going to be very easy things that you're doing. Already. Sell 10 things to a vendor or something. All the stuff that you're going to do anyway just by being online those are going to yeah. give you that little bonus the first time that you get to that one little milestone every day. So I don't think well, – I, I hope it's not going to be that, oh, well, I just came on for the first time today. Better spend the first hour doing all these stupid achievements. Yeah. I definitely I, – I, I like it better than the rest de- experience design because I know for sure when I played WoW, there were times when I said – well, I'm just not going to play this guy, and I'm going to play another game and get a couple of weeks of rest experience and then come back and level up a lot faster so <laughs> I feel like I'm grinding as much. It definitely you know? helped when you were going through those, like, grindy, grindy areas. Like, uh, Desolus was one area that I remember spending oh, God. so damn long wow. in. <laughs> and I just would say, okay, screw it. I love my shaman, but I'm stuck here, and I'm doing this thing. I'm just going to wait, and I'll come back in a week and, and, double, and go through this twice as fast because this is just blindingly boring we're, we're talking about potential progression without actually being online can we say eve anybody <laughs> hey, hey that's 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 a good thing about eve though i like that it, it is you know. <laughs> but that's yeah that's true so <clears throat> now monthly achievements are kind of a new thing uh, monthly achievements are medium, quote, medium term goals that encourage a variety of play and reward you with gold and experience. So they're similar to the daily achievements. The regular achievements, they don't, I don't think they reward you with gold or experience. At least it doesn't specifically say that. And it gives you pr- purely cosmetic rewards. So the standard achievements, you know, you beat these, you know, the, the first two dungeons on every single mode or whatever. Here's your achievement. You get some kind of skin, special skin for beating that dungeon right? Or some kind of special gear or what have you. Cosmetic gear. Uh, The dailies give you the golden experience as we've just been talking about. The monthlies also give you golden experience, but these ones specifically, they said, change every month. So the dailies are probably going to be the same every single day all the time, but the monthlies are going to change from month to month and these are going to, I believe, also add uh, to your gear score. So those are going to be very interesting, and that sounds like those are going to be the one. Score. Your <laughs> achievement score. I'm at achievement score. <laughs> They're gonna, but yeah, that's going to add to your to your achievement score, and sounds like the one that you're going to be enjoying. Uh, you know, that's a, that one's very interesting because that one's on a clock. That one you got to do in 30 days, so that's almost like work. 
You've got a timeline. You've got a deadline on this. <laughs> Bob, I need those TPS achievements uh, in by the 31st. Thank you. Right? I don't know. Freelancer, what do you think about that? I, I like how the monthly achievements say special or specifically say golden experience because think about it. Not everybody's going to be, I mean, we would like everybody to be playing since day one, but imagine the guy that comes in six months later um, and they had all these monthly achievements. They gave you these really, you know, awesome looking swords. That would really suck to be that guy because it's like <laughs> you could do nothing to get those. And if they did bring those back to where, let's say in October, you could, um, you know, do a, do the monthly achievement to get it. Well, then all the players that already got uh, that item would feel a little left out, also. So, mm -hmm. um, it also it, it on the other hand of things, it lessens the the impact of doing it because you you could think in your mind, oh well, it's just experience and gold. I'll just grind that out tomorrow night, you know, and then completely forego the whole achievement idea. So it you know it depends, I guess, on the player. But for the casual players, I think it's great. All right, excellent. So. Uh... You know, that was a pretty pretty nice article that gave a good bit of information. Any final thoughts on the achievements section there before we uh, we head out? Achievements are are like a their awesome. system. Well, no, they're not awesome. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're not. They're not awesome. They're a system that some people love to death. And that's why they're putting literally it in. Not, to death. No, literally. There are people that like <laughs> stay up all night and not study for their final exam because they have to get a certain achievement in some place. That is beyond me. In my opinion, but admitting it is the first step. <laughs> Great. <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh, Seriously, so... no, 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 no. Not, it was not my me. friend, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was this guy I know. <laughs> this guy in Korea. Uh, All right. <laughs> but yeah, it's a system. They're putting it in for the people who like it, and it's there. It's something I'm not gonna do. Well, let me ask you guys this. Um, I find that achievements feel more satisfying and interesting when I don't know what they are, when I'm not working towards them, when I just get it organically through play, when the game says, wow, you just did something amazing, and, and points it out to you. Exactly. Like, I don't know, say you're doing a Tony Hawk game or whatever, and you do like a triple 360, something you've never done before, the game will point out, hey, that's the first time you did that triple 360 or what have you, and great job. And, you know, the same kind of thing, like with the Left 4 Dead achievement I talked about, there's plenty of Team Fortress ones, like the, the first time you, you do a soldier, uh, you know, you, you mid-air two people simultaneously, it'll point out, man, you did an awesome job killing two people in mid-air with one rocket. You know, those kind of, you know, you, you just did the cool thing that you didn't know about before. Uh, I think that's great. But the ones where you just, that are just like, complete X thing, and then at the end it gives you this thing that you were expecting, it's not nearly as... It doesn't have the impact. You know what I'm saying? Um, I yeah. mean, freelancer, you're the you're the achievement guy. What do you think? <laughs> the achievement guy? Oh, oh man, you should have done that. Local whore. achievement whore. Use the right name, achievement whore. I, I just think it's it's a great way to track progress. I mean, you're playing a game. I mean, when it all comes down to it, it is a game, and you you like to know that all of that time you spend into doing something, whether it's a hundred quests, five thousand quests, PVP achievements are a great example. You know, you like to know that you have some way of showing that off. I mean, it's easy for somebody to say, oh, I'm, I'm gladiator this, gladiator that, you know, because he has X amount of wins or he has, uh, he's done this much damage in a battleground or had this perfect round. But without achievements to actually be there, I mean, we're talking about the, the wow factor of it, but the actual utility factor is without those achievements, you can't really claim or, or you can claim anything i mean this is the internet and those achievements act as a uh, as a, like a truth barrier you know to say hey look i really did do this you know whether it's grinding out or doing 5000 quests i really did do these 5000 quests and and i like that that uh functionality of them more than anything yep it's yep. I, I can see the advantage of, of – I mean the other thing achievements can provide is, is a concept of a new challenge of some variety. Like a lot of games use achievements that say, okay, now beat this level, but beat it without killing anybody or something to that effect, right? In some game where you have the option of killing people, like Day Sex, for example. You can do plenty of different ways, but the achievement says, okay, I'm setting you a challenge now. You've beaten this level using all of the tools in your arsenal. Now beat it using one less, or you, you know, beat it using only this tool, or what have you. That can give you a brand new experience in some cases and revitalize and allow a lot of replayability. Um, I, and so I can see the advantage of having achievements that you see and that you say, I'm going for that. 
I kind of wish there was a split where you have some achievements hidden that just pop up and say, you just did something awesome that you didn't even know was coming. Here's an awesome surprise. That, that, I just love that a lot more than, than ones that, if it's all written down, I'm going to go look it up and then I'm going to feel bad. So great. I got a question for great real quick. All right. There's an achievement, theoretically, in Guild Wars 2 that if you kill 5,000 innocent little penguins, like, no. within two oh. days, <laughs> that you will unlock the thriller dance for your character. Oh. <laughs> what, will horrible. you do it? Am I missing context here? Well, that's different. Well, no, 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 I don't want to say that. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> because that's awesome. I mean, who doesn't want to murder penguins mercilessly to learn how to dance? I mean, I wish I could go out right now and start clubbing seals. I just wanted to, to see where you draw the line. I'm sorry. <laughs> that, that would actually be a welcome achievement. Do something like that. Somebody who's going to go out there and spend five hours AOEing penguins deserves to get a dance. <laughs> penguins, they deserve like a dance. Like I said, South Park oh. episode, when they're in the, when they're the WoW episode, we're in the woods just killing boars, and they got to kill... Eight billion boars. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Achievements. Achievements Wait, are I great. Got, I, I got one more thing to say about achievements. All right. All right. Final. I like take it, us home. I like it in Guild Wars 2 because I feel that they do give a challenge and that their purpose isn't to get you addicted so that you're playing more and paying that monthly fee more. Like, I feel like a huge factor as to why, wow came up with the achievement system was because well this is another way that we're going to get people to get hooked into the game and just keep on playing because they're, they're done with the game but i got to get those achievements and then that gives me an extra 15 bucks a month from everyone so i like it in a game that you don't have a monthly fee so that it really is just about playing the game and not getting sucked into the game more just so you could pay the company more money Agreed. Uh, what I think the kind of concept that you're talking about is known as a Skinner box. Uh, and if anybody is interested in learning more about Skinner boxes, that's, that's a very interesting topic that has a lot to do with, with Vigi games. But the idea is that there was a guy named Skinner back in, I don't know, sometime after Freud, where um, until that time in psychology, the concept was that, you know, Pavlov's dogs, if you've ever heard that story, you can change physical reactions, you can condition physical reactions in animals. Well, Skinner had done, did a bunch of studies in which he basically figured out, okay, I can condition not only physical reactions, but human behavior. Not only animal behavior, but human behavior. I can change the behavior of humans based on these techniques, and those kind of techniques have been used in, in video games, and one of those techniques is infrequent rewards. It turns out if you like, if you press a button and every time you press a button you get some kind of a reward, be it food or money or what have you, it's not nearly as compelling to the human psyche as if you press that button and every once in a while you'll get some food or money. Think of a, think of, uh, I mean, it, the, basically the, um, the casino uh, jackpot, what the heck is that called where you pull the handle and the things happen? Slot machine? Slot, slot machine. machine. The slot machine is a Skinner box. You pull the handle and every once in a while you get some money and that compels you to keep doing it. And the infrequent reward schedule is what most MMOs like WoW are based around. I mean, you kill a monster, sometimes you get a little money, sometimes, hey, a green! I wonder if that's any good, you know? You don't get greens every time, you get it every once in a long while. And, and you don't yep. get a pur you get purple every once in a long, long while, and it's really exciting when you do. And that makes you want to keep going just one more level, just kill one more thing, maybe I'll get another awesome thing. And Anyway, there's a really good Extra Credits episode on it on the Penny Arcade website. Maybe I'll throw that into the show notes. But that's the idea behind a lot of what achievements have done in other games is they are an infrequent reward that is designed to compel you to keep playing. It's not the gameplay that's doing it. It's, hey, you just got a pat on the shoulder. So, yeah, I'm, I'm there with you. Anyway. <clears throat> Can I plug one more thing in? Just yes, one more. one more. Very short. The, the only thing, I, the only game I think that did achievements right was Warhammer with their Tome of Gnomes. Yes. 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 Wow. Because I, I love feel like that the, thing. The Tome actually had a purpose. Like you're you're going around in the world. You're like this new recruit, and you're filling this out as you're going along. And you're like, oh, yeah. these boars have like this, and then you kill a couple bunch of them, and you figure something out about them. It's it was like as you die more, you figure stuff out. You know, it, it yeah. was like it was like your journal. He knew about character. the dying part. Yeah, I knew a lot about the dying part. I love those <laughs> dying titles. The dying titles, those are great. All right, so, 
Achievement unlocked. Finish the achievement section. All right, let's talk about Thief. Yeah. Uh, I know... Uh, who, who here was uh, planning to play a Thief? Anybody? I am. Giga and Freelance are planning to play Thieves. All right. Um, Giga, talk to me about your reaction to what they talked about here in the Thief Changes. Um, let's see what specifically. The show notes. <laughs> okay, okay. The single powerful skill and the steel recharge timer. So it changes to steel. Yeah, they, they basically change. I'll, I'll, I'll re rehash it for people that don't know. So the way that steel used to work is when you chose something and you chose steel, it would immediately change your entire bar to either one or two or a couple new a new new skills that you can use with that thing that you just stole, and then That's you have to use it, and then you have to go back. The new way that they're doing it is when you ch use the steel button, your F1 button. It will replace that steel button with one powerful ability of whatever you stole. So if you stole from a tree thing, then you get like this branch that'll stun somebody when you hit them with it or what have you. And if you steal from a specific profession, then you can get one of three powerful abilities randomly from that profession. Something like that. Maybe you get a like skull from a necromancer. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what the, uh, the thing is, but... The specific part of it is important is that the steel recharge timer does not start until you use the stolen item, but you can keep the stolen item as long as you want. And I wonder if that translates into PvP. I assume not competitive PvP. You probably start fresh. Why not? Why not? Oh, you mean you take it into the match? Yeah. No, I'm no sure way. you can use the steel skill, but you can't like, <laughs> okay, there's this specific <laughs> mob that has this flash powder that blinds everyone and all around them. Yeah. <laughs> and you just That'd take that into PvP. You take the boss, get like an AoE fear. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be doing Friday Night Rays just to get that, that, that weapon to bring <laughs> into PvP. The I next can't day. use my steel at all. Oh no, I accidentally hit my F1 button. Hours <laughs> wasted. No. It's a huge improvement over the last system where it gave you an environmental weapon. That was pretty crap. I mean, a lot of them didn't even have more than a couple abilities on them. Yeah, so, so it didn't make it's sense. much better. Yeah. I still don't like the RNG on it. I think you should you should have more control over it. It should be more predictable. But that does make you kind of have to adapt to different situations. So it adds an interesting element. Yeah, um, yeah. Without playing it, I won't you know, totally discount the value of that. Right. But stealth, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about it because... It's good to have more powerful abilities when you're in stealth. Like, it's as a bonus, it's kind of cool. But if it's only my first ability, that means I have to use stealth. And then, like, I, I kind of feel like I have to have that off cooldown just to use it then. Of course, it's going to well, be the first, first ability, ability so it's a short cooldown. A, well, no, remember, yeah, the, the, the thief doesn't have any cooldowns, they use initiative instead. But the first yeah. ability in each bar, and on each weapon, is zero initiative. Oh, so it is. it's always a free See, I one. didn't know that. Because I was thinking I would make. It'd mean I have to use my initiative like for that thing, and I didn't like being forced into that. But yeah, I think that's a great change in that case. I didn't wasn't aware that those didn't cost initiative. So, yeah. yeah. So stealth stealth is one of those fine lines. I think that everybody's like stealth ruins game MMOs, or stealth is awesome. I'm one of those fanboys. Um, well, <laughs> stealth combined with stun lock. Ruins MMOs. Stunlock is just way. stupid. It's like, Stunlock is oh, here, stupid. Let me press one, two, three, four every fight. Ha ha ha. You know. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. It, <laughs> says I, the freaking rogue. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's it's okay when I do it. Do it. Looks. <laughs> let me put it like this: If you, do, or, it's like I, we've been playing a lot of LOL or League of Legends recently, and like mm -hmm. getting stunned next to a tower and getting insta killed. You know, everybody blames the the stun right but you still come back to the main point that you should have not put yourself in that position that allowed you to be so but vulnerable. the fact that the rogue can be stealth means you never know you've put yourself into that position until the first stun goes off that's the freaking point <laughs> it's it's awesome though like stealth and leak is awesome i, I am 100 percent for see stealth and, leak. and everybody stealth... wants about that being op but it's still, have... it's it's this simple stealth it's kind of like what Andrew's saying. Stealth, to go along with that, is I can choose what battles I want to win and also choose what battles I, I know I'm going to lose. You know, stealth gives that class, and I think it's just going to it's gonna do the same thing as it did in, in WoW for Rogues as it will in Guild Wars 2. It gives the thief that complete uniqueness to be able to control the complete outcome of their situation. If I, if I go stealth, I can make that decision whether to run without you being able to do a single thing about it, assuming there isn't much uh, stealth revealing skills, but uh, or I can 
wait for that perfect moment to jump on you and kill you before you even know it's knows what happened. And um, it's all based on my skill and my player ability to be able to judge that I can take you out with zero problems or I'm going to back off and wait until you make a mistake and then take you out with zero problems. It's, it's just one of those things that it, I, I've yet to see another MMO or uh, mechanic in any game that matches what stealth does to the battlefield. Um, I hope Mesmer has something you know that's really you know quite unique i don't see anything out of ranger and ranger and guardian and stuff i'm sorry they just to me when you compare stealth to a class that just shoots arrows and plays traps it's it's no comparison because it just isn't well to be fair the ranger does have a camouflage skill which i believe if they stay still they yeah, get they indefinite still. stealth which the uh the the, the thief does not have as yeah. far as the, I know. the only the only rogues and wow that need indefinite stealth are the ones that are de dead all the time okay Is there... <laughs> <laughs> if if you want watch... killed <laughs> yeah exactly the the ones that are dead anyway i mean what difference does the stealth make and if you look at anybody that plays halfway decently and wow they are never stealth for more than i don't know 6 seconds and that's even giving a little bit of leeway there um, it just doesn't happen. You don't use stealth in that way. So I think the better players from WoW, the, the better rogues that are moving over and they think they're going to play Thief because it's similar, I'm probably going to be one of those people. It, you're not going to experience. <laughs> you're not going to experience any difference here because it's going to be the same mechanic. You're going to use stealth as one of those things where I'm running up to you. I'm running up to you. I'm running up to you. You see me. You're targeting me. Bam! I disappear. All of a sudden, you have this confusion, uh, this state of mind of like, oh crap, what do I do? Spam AOEs? Do I? pop a potion or you know and that is where the thief and the rogue excel at and i don't think it's going to be any different in jiggle i think it's a lot better because instead of having a stealth and vanish it's like you have two or three vanishes yeah that's yeah. I, really, I know that they have a heal better. that will heal them and make them vanish and i think they've got another couple of utility skills it's really interesting that it's not a like class skill it's one of their utility skills that they can choose you know, to use or not use. I think every, all thieves are probably going to run with at least one stealth, but you can run without it if you're trying to build a different type. If you're trying to build a fighter that has a lot of, like, speed-type maneuvers, like, you instead of using stealth to get in and out of combat, you have things that make you move or jump better. Like, there's teleport. a teleport skill that, skill that the thief Several has. Them, actually. So, yeah, if you use those instead of stealth to get in and out of combat, that's just a different kind of thief. And the fact that you can have different kinds of thieves are, is awesome. I'm, I love hook. it. Yeah. The hook that, is that phenomenal. Is cool. That's going to have so much utility. The oh, the, the grab that idea. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The hook <laughs> utility skill. Describe that for, for everybody. That's too good. It's it's just like um, um, hooks and like MOBAs and whatnot. I've never seen one in MM. Well, I guess we have. It's similar to Death Grip. I think most MMO Wait, players is it, can is recognize it, is that. Is it like, get over here? Is that what it is? Yes. yes. <laughs> get over here. <laughs> Yanks them to Scorpion. you. Scorpion. It's phenomenal. Yeah. It's uh, so good. it's like that one champion in in League of Legends Blitz that has crack, that hook Blitz that crack. reaches yeah. out and yeah, okay. Hooks are so good. Uh, you're gonna be uh, able to get up top, like grab a guy, pull him up to you, like <laughs> from the lower level, and then like burst him down <laughs> while his friends just gotta watch. Dude, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna Pulls send like a heated. Go You're ahead. gonna send a death squad of of these guys running up to the the enemy castle, just pulling people <laughs> off. <of> the... <laughs> <laughs> well, you got rangers up, like up there thief. shooting their bow, their long bow. They think they're all set. Some thief comes around sneaking alongside the wall itself and starts yanking them down. And, and this is assuming we don't have the mesmer setting up the teleport in the keep room. So yeah, well, <laughs> well, here's the thing: like the thief has a lot of these like really weird movement abilities. So like. There's ones where they pull, like, the hook, and then there's others where they charge up, like, with the shadow shot, I think it is. Yeah. So, like, they shoot you, and they go where that bullet basically hit. I wonder, I wonder now, also, would, um, can you use the hook on allies? Because that would be great if a thief could use his <laughs> teleport to get to the top of the wall, pull the mesmer up so that he can then go behind and drop down the portal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man, that would be great. Who needs a ladder when you've got the thief and his crazy hook shot? Like, he's linked for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, but see what you just said. It's not just like the thief does that alone. They need like someone else too. Like they need the mesmer, and then you can like easily breach the wall by everyone teleporting in through the mesmer. So it's like it's not just like one class carrying the game. It's like I'm just picturing you grabbing some random teammate that has no idea what just happened, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden he's on the enemy wall. You know, and so he starts smashing buttons. 
I just see it. So I Sorry, guess... Bridger, I don't think that's going to ever make it in No, the game. probably not. <laughs> I uh, imagine pulling people out of, like, hectic situations and, like, just screwing up the fight, take a key, like, grab a healer, and the rest of the team doesn't even yeah. know what happened, they're just gone. <laughs> <laughs> grab the leader, like, identify which guy's making the calls, and, like, <laughs> I just, like, imagine a fight in World vs. World happening near a forest, and suddenly this thing comes out of the forest, grabs him, and pulls him in, <laughs> just like, where'd Hank go? Hank, what do we do? <laughs> Hank? Hank! <laughs> I don't know why the leader would ever be named Hank. I don't think anybody would vote him. In. <laughs> Nobody would follow a Hank, really. You'd have to be Henry. Henry's a good name. I have a name, name for my Guild Wars 2 character. Hank. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever follow a Hank. All right. So they did, ex uh, for example, say the first dagger skill becomes backstab, uh, which does increased damage when used behind the target, and the first pistol skill becomes sneak attack, which provides a rapid-fire attack that causes bleeding. So um, basically... Each weapon gives you a different stealth ability, which is kind of cool. So you've got the the pistol, the dagger, and you've got the short bow. And what am I missing? What else can be in the main hand? I know they can sword. also do... Oh, that's right. Can they put sword in yeah, main swords. hand? Yeah, sword yeah, probably yeah, has something else. So maybe it's a sword throw. I love throwing swords. It's just <laughs> way better than throwing daggers, I think, automatically. All right, so <clears throat> the last part of this... Uh, this blog discussed combat tuning and fine tuning and specifically they said that they have this sort of animation blending system that allows them to blend two different animations together and look make them look natural but that sounds like oh that looks cool but it has a huge impact on how the game feels control wise when playing it because skills and things that you do have animations and those animations have a certain amount of time that they need to run in order because you can't just stop swinging your sword halfway through it will look terrible so they need to finish that animation which means if the animation cannot flow straight from one into another very easily and quickly then the game is going to feel laggy because it's not responding to what you're doing so they said in the in the in the, de in the demos at, like, PAX and Gamescom, they had this technology on a couple of specific skills, like the chain skills that the warrior does. When he punches his one key three times in a row, he does one, one swipe with the sword, another swipe with the sword, and then a thrust. And those are all designed to blend together. Sever artery leads to gash, which flows into thi final thrust. Uh, we, we realized, quote, we realized this system did not need to be rever uh, reversed for, reserved for just chain skills, but could be applied to the entire game. There were skills such as Savage Leap, which moved the player into range of their target, and big control attacks like Shield Bash that you wanted to be able to quickly follow with another skill. The problem was that the animations for these skills had follow-through that was preventing players from using another skill until the animations were finished. That is a very important thing to recognize, and it sounds... And I'm just, like, jumping for joy, because they basically said, our programmers added this technology that allowed us to do this with basically every skill in the game. So that means that the game is going to feel, control-wise, way better than it otherwise would have. So, can who who here is playing Star Wars or or has messed around with it? Any of you guys? I played the I've played beta, it, but that was it. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's by now a million different YouTube videos online, and you can watch combat and stuff. The biggest problem with Star Wars, I think, is exactly what Guild Wars Two right here is fixing. Um, if you Star Wars is is great in a lot of ways, I'm not going to bash it. it. It does have a lot of good things going for it. But one thing that steered me away from it is if you watch like the um, the Jedi uh, different Jedi classes, and I'm not sure that is. Um, and you, anyways, you watch the different Jedi classes and you watch the way they swing their lightsaber. It's it's exactly not how Guild Wars 2 is doing it. You know, you swing it, then you swing it the same way. Oh, wait, maybe the next animation's on the side. It, it just, it, it, when you get, when you become such a fan of the movies and the special effects, and the first time you see Yoda do his lightsaber battle, <laughs> it, it's, you, you get into this flow, you know, that you expect to see out of somebody holding a lightsaber, for example. And in Guild Wars 2, they're trying to make it where if a guy with a great sword uh, for example, swings his sword one way to do a skill and then follows up immediately with another skill, it, it's going to flow through together. Whereas in Star Wars, it doesn't matter how many skills you spam. 
it, it just looks like they have to stop every time and, and then, go back to sort of a neutral yeah, and go pose, back. basically. Exactly. Well, well the and, problem with, with the Star Wars is that each each ability has its own animation. So, like, there's like 20 animations that each class can do. So, there's no like transition between the two of them. So it's just like you use one and then use another, and then like this whole when they were showing off the game and originally in trailers and stuff, they had this like really crazy looking like legitimate Star Star Wars combat. And it will do that sometimes. There's times where I was playing where it looked really cool for a second, and then like I'd use an ability and it would just mess up the whole thing. So I'm like, I don't want to use abilities because it looks better when I don't use abilities. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm so funny. quoting you on that. <laughs> it looks better when I don't use abilities. It does. It I'm does. When you're just all steroids. steroids. Nothing but steroids. Because the auto attack <laughs> is probably a series of moves that are all one large animation that can be interrupted at any given moment. That's probably how they did it to make it look better. Yeah. Much in the same way that prior to this, they had those specific chain skills like the warrior and a couple other classes have um, that are designed to flow one right next to each other. They look really good because this technology was created for that. Then they said, <clears throat> this technology came in right before Gamescom. Quote, so we were able to showcase it with a few important skills in that demo. Now the technology has evolved. Not only does it allow players to specify when they can start movement, but it also allows us to transition into queued skills so that we can improve responsiveness. And that, unquote, sorry, and that is really important because if you are, like, doing a savage leap, like the example that they used, and as your character is getting to the point where he's going to about to land right next to your, his opponent, you want to have that other... You're going to be hitting... You're going to be slamming your finger on that, you know, crit ability or whatever that you have that you're about to hit him with. There's a stun or whatever you want. And if you hit that button, it needs to queue up and know that that's what you want to do. You don't have to time it to exactly match the exact moment that the game allows you to go. You wanted to have it queue up. So I'm really glad to hear that you don't have to have that perfect exact timing. You can do it a few milliseconds early and the game will remember and flow smoothly straight into the thing that you want to do instead of waiting until after the full animation is done and then saying, okay, now you can go. That's just, I, uh, this whole section doesn't <laughs> I, sound like a lot, but it like does, it makes a huge a difference. Fighter. I, I, I don't. I like the 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 twitch aspect though. I, I, it's not a bad thing. I don't mind queuing up, you know, skills. But you start getting into that territory of trying to dumb it down for the the people that can't keep up. And well, I don't mean queued skills like like Kotor queued skills where you just say pick your things in order. I'm saying just that the anim the game. If you're leaping through the air, the game is not going to allow you to start casting a new thing until you get to point X when you land. And if you can hit a button when you're leaping through the air, that's a lot more responsive and easier than having to, you know, figure out, not through any visual cues, but just when the animation allows you to continue and well, choose a is, new you're thing. Not, you're not going to have to figure it out anyway. It's not reflexive or skill in any way. It's just like everybody's going to be slam, 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 tap, 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 tap. I mean, that's what they do in raids. That's exactly what's going on. Like it's it's not, not a not Twitch me. thing. It's just I'm, I'm very calculating in what I do. Depends on how long the animations are. Like if they're gonna be like instant and it's gonna be like half a second animations, you're just gonna spam, like Giga says. But if it's like if if they're like longer than a second animations, that you actually have to time and queue stuff up and you have time to actually like think about something, they might be more than just spamming. Especially well, with so I, few I, abilities. I, I like what they said at the end of the article, and I think it kind of describes everything really well, is that it it controls like an MMO, but the abilities are like a MOBA, um, and your interactions are like a like an FPS. Because yeah, you know, it, I like that. That's what I hated about all the other MMOs. Is that when you're in a battle, you're sitting there, and it's like, got you. <laughs> Got you. Like no one fights like that. You know, no one, no one fights like that. So the fact that you know you're going to be running around, you're going to be using skills, and that everything flows so much more smoothly is that it really adds a lot to the game. And um, I, I lost my train of thought. But, um, I just, I, I just swung like, the sword. I swung I the just, sword again. <laughs> Talk yeah, about I just, I like, just like, I just like how they said that it's gonna have abilities like a MOBA because I feel that, you know, MOBAs they they have a good flow when it comes to using your skills and if if Guild Wars is gonna try and mimic that sort of flow in combat, I think it'll be a very fresh, 
um, perspective as opposed to what a lot of MMOs do nowadays. Yep. Cool. When they say MOBA skill, I don't. I I actually don't think spammy. Like there's no MOBA characters that I've played in any game, League of Legends or Dota 2, that are spammy. If I don't think there are any. And I know like your number no. one, your number Rise. one. I know in Guild Wars two, is Rise. He's he, he's spammy, but there his ability still have cooldowns. You can't just like keep using his number no. one or Q. Well, actually, you can. His Q is like what you do. You cast Q, and then you cast another spell, and it resets the cooldown. For Q, and then you just press Q again, and another skill in Q, and another skill in Q. That's why he blows people up so quick. Yeah, you but don't you have to use other abilities? Yeah, it's like one, two, one. Yeah, two, but you're still one, using another ability. See, that's four, working with his passive. It's like you're using his abilities, but you're not. All spamming. right, all right. This isn't Tales of Legend. <laughs> that was my last show, and it wasn't about League of Legends, as it was about <laughs> Rise of Legends, which is a fantastic <laughs> game. That was. We're not getting into that. So, this. Quote, this really sh uh, they, they also went back, actually, sorry. Uh, they also went back, uh, they said, we didn't stop there after this stuff that we're talking about. They said, since we were able to go back and polish it, we also took a look at the impact of the new blending changes and made some timing changes to existing skills in order to give them a more appropriate anticipation, swing time, and follow through to match the smoother feel we were achieving with the blending. This really shines in things like big hammer swings, which now have slow buildups, quick attacks, and somewhat lengthy follow through, depending upon the skill. Ultimately, it creates a more visceral and immediate system with helps us straddle the line between action game and RPG. And they said that you specifically might have noticed that the more the animations were more polished in the G-Star demo because of that whole thing. So, wow. that's I'm just very blown away. Like, the animations and everything was fantastic to begin with, and now it's going to be even better. So, I think we spent plenty of time on that. <laughs> All right. One more thing I wanted to talk about for today... Let's talk about... This is such a huge topic. Maybe we should save this for another show, actually, now that I think about it. What do you guys think? It's, uh, that is a pretty big we're, topic. We're at 49 minutes. I'm thinking well, that... Uh, well, we could, we could like touch on it and sort of... like to be Let's continued. give a preview for next week's. Next week's roundtable, ladies and gentlemen. Because <laughs> I anticipate this is going to take a while, but let's, let's give it a shot. All right. So, what would make the ideal MMO RPG? RTS, whatever. So, <clears throat> we all know that there's a technological limitation to a lot of the things that you want to do with an MMO that you can't do. Um, so let's kind of assume that we had, you know, computers that are like 10 years from now, like Moore's Laws continued to grow like at the normal rate that it's supposed to grow at, and we've got wicked fast computers, super fast RAM, video cards that can handle anything. Who cares? Wait, people aren't even going to remember what the uncanny valley was because everything's going to be super realistic. So <clears throat> what technical, um, technological limitations um, do you think hamper us right now? Well, I guess the one that I can think of is the number of players on screen. If you want to have some kind of massive battle, EVE, which is supposed to have all these massive battles, the most populated system, people have to lower their settings just to go into it because it's so filled with people. So what can we do if we could put more people on screen? What do you think, Great? What do you, can you think of any awesome possibilities that we could do? Or people on screen would just equal... I don't know. It's something that we've never really done. Everything's always been capped at some point. Like, the designers have always made it very... Very, uh... They, they've always had a cap there to make sure that it doesn't go out of control and it doesn't, like, crash. Because, like, at that point, I think if you get too many people there, it's just going to crash. And you say, if we, that's gone, well, we don't know what happens <laughs> when you get rid of the elevation because it's never been done. Well... Uh, Theory-wise, I'll just say it would be a lot more chaotic. That's anything with no cap would be insane amount of people would be out of control. Vega. Um, yeah, I, that's what I was gonna say. Is that I just remember, um, you know, you, I, I don't know if anyone ever played Ragnarok, um, but God. you go into you go into town and there's literally just like a sea of people on top of people and you can't see anything. Um, so, I mean, even if there was, if, if you could have as many people on screen doing everything they want to do all at the same time and no one's computer slows down, I think it would ruin the gameplay because there would just be way too much going on. And you wouldn't be able to sort of, I, I think you need to limit that, not for the sake if, you know, for the sake of the computer, but for the sake of gameplay. Okay. So, Freelancer, uh, what... Can you think of that? Are there are there any like technological or or just sort of maybe 
maybe thought barriers that have been broken through with Guild Wars 2, that they're doing something different uh, that other games weren't able to do in the past? Like, what, what, I mean, Guild Wars 2 obviously doing a ton of different things, but are they things that couldn't have been done before? Uh, they could have been done before, and in a lot of cases they have been done before. Mm -hmm. I mean, Guild Wars 2 does bring a lot of uh, refreshing new ideas, but they're not exactly completely new. They've always been tested in one way or, or another in the past. Um, it's just those past games didn't do it successfully, and Guild Wars 2 is trying to change it up a little bit to make it successful. Um, as far as the, you were saying, like, the, the barriers, I, I mean, everybody knows Guild Wars 2 is... Um, is trying to blend the bear, you know, the transition between uh, a casual player coming in and, and not really knowing the game, but learning through all these different steps and trying to transition them through this process to get them into world PVP. And then, like they said themselves, world PVP being a casual environment, trying to also progress those people through and get them into a more competitive uh, uh, arena-based environment. I think that's great. You know, no other MMO has given you. I mean, just well. Think of WoW, obviously the most common one. You either play PvP because your friend showed you how to play it, or you don't touch it. I mean, there's no progression there. There's no getting somebody accustomed to doing arena matches. It's you go in there and you get face stomped, or <laughs> you know, or you find buddies that teach you how to play. There's no, you know, there's no progression. And I think, if anything, uh, that's what Guild Wars 2 is doing right. I think their process that they're working on is very intuitive. And I think it will, you'll see a lot of new faces, we'll just put it like that, as, as far as arena is concerned, uh, as far as tournament scenes and such are concerned. I think that the turnover rate for newer players trying to get into something that's beyond just questing for the achievements um, is going to be much higher because they're going to be introduced to it, whereas in previous games they were never introduced to it at all, besides friends and such. All right, <clears throat> so let me ask this. So technological limitations are obviously always a problem. What about things that, you, that we wish that we could do in an MMO that wouldn't work because players would break them? Like, like what, wouldn't it be great if, you know, we could do X, but we can't do X because people are just going to grief the system? You know, that kind of a concept. I mean, <clears throat> I always imagined, like, what if we could have, like, a game master, right, to take people through some kind of scripted dungeon that would be able to sort of play the guy behind the scenes. So you weren't just playing mobs that had pre-predictable AI that you could go look up and say, oh, well, this boss does this, and then he does this, and then, you know, you just got to get in there and beat on him when he's stunned. Um, it, wouldn't it be really awesome to have, like, some guy playing, like, an RTS style in the background, looking down in the dungeon and placing new mobs and doing this and all the time that goes by, he's getting resources to try and, you know, fight his way, but he can't put anything behind the players and, I don't know, that would be a really cool concept but is that a technological limitation? Is that a design limitation or would people just not buy into that? What do you guys think? I don't I don't think people would really uh, it depends I mean, I I'm going to leave my... I have a big old rant about that. We'll go, I'll go ahead and move on to the next person. <laughs> no one's going to buy into it. I'll say yeah, no one's going to buy into that. There you go, Bridger. It, I'm sorry, man. Nobody it's, it's, it's too, like, niche. It's, like, too, like, small... Demo. First of all, it won't ever be made, unless by indie. And because it fills such a small, like, demographic of, like, interests... I just imagine like a Left 4 Dead style where people could play as the, as the enemies in an MMO. I just feel like that would be cool. But... Well... <laughs> they did that Lord of the Rings, though, I, uh, and it didn't catch very well, so... Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it's... so there's that. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, it, they didn't really go really all that, you know, deep into it either. It was just this one little zone. They called it Monster Play, and you could choose from about <laughs> six different characters. And they didn't really go forth with it because of all the contracts and stuff, which was a shame, because they could have done a lot with it. Um but yeah, I, I don't know. Bridger, if you were to ask me what would make the perfect MMO, I think that Guild Wars 2 mixed with the the idea and process of what, like, Spore had, what, uh, I dare say, The Sims had, the creativity factor. Mm. Uh, you know, okay, I could take this keep, but what if I want to design my own keep? What if I want to set up my own lands and build my own villages and set up my own economies or... or 
I, I, I look forward to the game, and I know it's been done in a few other games. Please don't spam chat. <laughs> but they never did it well. I, I think the, the MMO that comes out and says, not only can you take this heap, but you can customize it. And I'm not talking about adding different types of guards on the front door. I'm talking about, I want to keep that overlooks, you know, Mount Doom. I, you know, this, <laughs> you can Still customize it. Plus and, and, and we all laugh about it, you know, it, but I think the game that offers the creativity aspect beyond just dyeing your armor is the game that is going to be so successful that, you know, it'll be like the next WoW. Like, that's, for baby. that's exactly... Like that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, I, I would want an MMO where every single person looks looks completely unique, you know? And that everything could be changed down to the littlest detail and that there's millions and millions of different options for, for everything from armor to your keep to everything. And I think that that's... I think the reason why something like that is so difficult to do is because, you know, it, it would take so much time to, you know put all those things in the game and you know make it so that it's easily accessible and you know I, I'm not I don't know much about how much space and everything you need to take up for a certain game in order to make it realistic but um, something where every single person looks unique and different I think would be really cool yeah and I, and I want to make a last little note real quick is I'm not getting at the fact that it'll be like um, what is it uh Simple Life. What is the uh, MMO out now where you just do anything you want? Um, Second Life? Second, Second Life. Second Life. Thank you. Let's tip my tongue. Okay. I'm not talking like Second Life where you can go into Guild Wars 2, go to Tier 2 World v. World Zone, and create a My Little Pony castle. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not talking where there isn't structure. Okay? It's just... And I love that pick, by the way. You're real funny. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talk you know, there would be structure, you would have to follow the lore and stuff, and therefore you'd still be enveloped in the game, but it would still allow you a lot more freedom than just your character. Uh, that that would be the perfect MMO for me. That's actually kind of where I meant to go, but I kinda of went a different direction when I was talking about the idea behind having somebody play a game master, because I think of all the freedom that you have in like a tabletop RPG. Your character, you can literally say, my character scales the wall. And the GM says, well, you tried, you got about halfway up, but then you fell back down. How do you know? Because I rolled this die. And then I decided what happened. You know, the, 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 the creativity of a human mind can decide, you know, can arbitrate those things. A game world with programmed rules that have been written out by programmers can only predict and allow you to do certain types of interactions with the world. You can hit it with a thing, you can jump on it, and you can pass through it or knock into it. Like those are the three things that you can do in any MMO, any FPS, and then maybe you can interact with it with an interact button. Like very few other games allow you to do anything besides that. Minecraft is crazy because you can't just go up and click on something and just interact with it. You can pull it down and then put it somewhere else. Nothing that really lets you do that anywhere. And and like that's what that was kind of the revolution of the, the I mean it obviously it had never been done before. I'm not don't don't email me. I know these kinds of things have happened before. <laughs> but my point was that's one of the things that made it so special. And it allowed you a deeper layer of interaction than most, most games give. Most games allow you to do those three things. It's either smash it, interact with it, jump on it, and or pass through it. That's it. That's all you get. So I think I agree with you completely that the ideal MMO gives you way more options. And the way that I could think that that would work is, is to have somebody, I don't know how you would do it, but have somebody sort of arbitrate what, what can and can't be done it, I just don't even know how you would t <laughs> do that programmatically. <laughs> like, there's just no way to script everything you, that everybody wants to do. I think what Bridger's trying to say here is he wants to be able to take every female NPC to bed in Guild Wars 2. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it yes. that way, it does sound like I'd be a badass. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know. Sensory over... Oh, I don't even know if I want to click on that. So, yeah, no, it's, no. That, that's the idea. <laughs> the problem there is not technological. We could allow you to do all these different things in the game world. The problem is 
there's no way to do it without spending huge amount of man hours to create the structures that allow you to make those interactions that allow anything to actually work correctly. So yeah, we just, Skyrim we just need a computer plus, that can think think on its own. It the Skyrim MMO. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> and I have to say, <laughs> the uh, the thing that is possible to do right now, the thing that I would say would make my ideal MMO is audio quality. I think if you've got great music, but more importantly, great sound effects, like sound design is incredibly important, but if you're walking down a, on a grassy hill and then you walk into the woods and if you get a different sound effect because you walked onto a different texture, now it's like crunchy leaves instead of soft grass when you're walking, that is a huge, huge improvement of, of like the, uh, the, the, in, the, in the I word that you want to insolve yourself. What? Um, immersion immersion we had a whole episode on that <laughs> immersion wow okay so immersion like yeah i just uh, and, and that's just one small example but like the best sound design i've ever heard has been in a game like mafia or la noir it's just every little thing that you do when the guy takes a puff on the cigarette you hear the sound of the guy they, they clearly went above and beyond for the sound effects and then the voice acting if the voice acting is fantastic that makes a huge difference to games for me, expect to pull me in and get me interested. So, those are the kinds of things that can be done now. They're not technological limitations, but nobody does it because the scale of MMOs are so amazingly large. It's only with Guild Wars 2 and Knights of the Old, or not Knights, The Old Republic, um, that we really have people trying to do fully voiced content in, a, in sort of these AAA massive MMOs. So yeah, that's that's my apparently, my apparently you never played uh, with played the game with the welcoming scene, Welcome to Rapture. Oh, oh. or Battlefield Three, or I oh, mean, well, Battlefield Three has games. fantastic too. I'm talking about though MMOs specifically because the oh, scale of yeah. MMOs. Plenty of games have had great sound design. I'm saying that MMOs have not had the same level of sound design simply because there's so much that to go into that detail over the entire, like, way different areas would, would take so many man hours that it's infeasible from a monetary standpoint, which is unfortunate. But, yeah, 60 feature films of voice acting in Guild Wars 2, as Servio points out. That is, uh, you know, it sounds like a great number. Um, I don't know uh, if it will, you know, but the quality of the voice acting matters, too, because Oblivion had tons of voice but it was like the same guy <laughs> and the same girl everywhere the uh, one voice actor yeah skyrim did better by getting like 18 voice actors but you still hear the same 18 same everywhere <clears throat> uh it's still yeah it's skyrim definitely did a much better job so as long as uh guild wars 2 can can hold up the 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 skyrim voice acting candle i'd, I'd be happy well one, one name for you felicia day there you go yep She's playing um, Zujo. Azura. Yeah, the Azura. It's Zuji, Zuji, Zuji. I don't know. What I can't of them? remember the name of it. Oh, I gotta read Destiny's Edge. Anyway, <clears throat> any final <laughs> thoughts on the uh, the ideal MMO? I'll I'll say two things that I would love to see in an MMO. Uh, better story, and I'll elaborate on it in a second. And different sorts of Zoja. like gameplay and strategies evolving. Thank you, Jack. So for the first one, story, I don't mean like literally like like Star Wars, like, oh, we're going to have this awesome story. No, I think like they need to look more at uh, the world and like characters and like flavor. Because like the reason why everyone loves Skyrim and they want a Skyrim MMO is because that world is so memorable. Consistent. It ha it, it, yeah, it's pers well, it's persistent, it's but consistent. it has a character to it. It's like it's the main character of Skyrim. Skyrim is the main character of Skyrim, hands down. Whoa, I think whoa, you're blowing my mind. We really? have to go deeper. That's deep. That is deep. <laughs> Sky so I heard you like Skyrim, so I put some Skyrim character in your Skyrim <laughs> game. Like, what? Okay, sorry. I've been on Reddit too much. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, yeah, I mean, it's funny, but it's true. Like, that's why I like Skyrim. It's a fun world to be in. And WoW was a fun world. Like, the World of Warcraft was an amazingly depth, in-depth world. There's until a lot they, to Until it. they added the goblins, I agree with you completely. But well, Jersey like, Shore, come on, Blizzard! Do I have to go on a rant here too? No, sorry. Go ahead. The one thing that really got me when I was playing like in Villain WoW was uh, I was going to places where I had done battles in Warcraft Three and saying like this is where we did this battle in the storyline. Like there was this idea, like there was this sort of overall like theme or like uh, part of this world that was like alive in a way. Yeah. And then for like different strategies, I want to see like uh, different away from hockey. 
maybe. See what we can do. And I know other things have tried this, but it would be interesting to see how that would work. Are you are you blinking Morse code at someone, freelancer? No. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were like, help, this, co- this show is going on too long, SOS, SOS. <laughs> All right, but yeah, we're, we're a little over time here. So um, I think with that, we're going to close it out here. <laughs> it's just, oh man, I got to go play some more League. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have been uh, watching us here, you can join us on the uh, Team Legacy, uh, uh, Team Legacy, uh, Team Speak Please server. Speak. Jeez, I gotta get used to saying that. Team Speak. You can find the information at teamlegacy.net. Uh, the host and I are probably gonna go play some League of Legends now. So anybody watching live, you can come on over to the Team Legacy Team Speak. The information is at the top right of the website. If you are uh, listening to this, you know, post. You know, come on there. We're hanging out there usually all the time. You can find Freelancer and I. Gigawatt hangs out there. I've seen Aku. Great coming on there all the time. So uh, come hang out with us on the website there. TeamLegacy.net is how you can get to us. Thanks, everybody, for watching slash listening. See you later. See ya. Bye, everyone. Everybody in the podcast. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Everybody in the podcast, Happy New Year. And by the way, let's go out by sitting like a Yarl. Guild Wars... Two might come out this year. (laughs) (laughs) That's the way to do it. (laughs) 